everybody. You ever had that crazy uncle at a Christmas party where he says, hey, these three guys walk into a bar and everybody digs for carpet because they can't absolutely be anywhere near that joke? I happen to know the other two guys here. And I've got the David Blackman. I mean, this guy is a legend in my mind. I have to stock him for content. So he is, <laughs> I'm a st- content stalker. I don't like that. And, and, and so David is on the energy question. He is on energy realities. He is a hoot. He's also on the daily caller, um, Forbes and his own sub stack. David, welcome. And how are you today? Almighty one. Oh, I'm just, uh, I'm Okay. I'm okay. Things started thawing out at our house yesterday evening, and and pipes started uh, leaking, and so it's been a challenge. But uh, we're good. We're good. I'll tell you what. I had an absolute hoot with you on the energy realities yesterday. You were bundled up. Uh, you look like somebody <laughs> out of the movie Oliver. And if your wife came in and gave you a bowl and said, uh, I need more, I would have just absolutely <laughs> been hilarious. And next around the corner here, we got RT. And RT is about to give me a backhand. RT is one of them big dogs over there at Pecos Operating. And I mean, he is the podcast host of The Crude Truth. And I mean, he is just one of them guys out in the field. He's one of them guys delivering low-cost energy to David. Because David needs it. He is he was been really frosty. And I forgot another set headphone set. So he and I are sharing one very short string and it's driving both of us nutty. So welcome, RT. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you as always. And uh, man, what another great episode of three podcasters walking to a bar. David, I'm uh, I'm a little mad that you're not back from assignment just yet. Uh, but I did get a chance to watch a little bit of, um, uh, I guess it's called Energy Realities. Yep. Okay. Um, is, yes. I got to watch. You got to watch yesterday, and now I guess I see why you were all bundled up. I guess you had no heat. Oh man! What it, well, we had heat. I was doing my part to obey the ERCOT conservation request. Terry and I are very conscientious customers of the Texas yes. grid, and when ERCOT. You know, on the 17 days a month, it issues a conservation request. We turn our thermostats down to 66, and I put on my New York City, Wyoming sweater and, uh, you know, my gloves that I only wear in Alaska and bundle up and and tough it out, man, because I'm a Texan. I'm hardy. I know how to to live the hard life like my ancestors did when they came to the state in the 1820s. So, You know, it's just another day in Texas with the Texas grid, guys. I I love it. Well, um, I I do kind of want to – I do got a question. Well, um, I got a question, guys, um, because I don't know what exactly is the energy reality. Because I got to listen yesterday. I I, I tuned in. It's like 8 o'clock on Monday morning. So I tuned in for about, I don't know, a few minutes. And you made a great point about how it would take 20 years in like over a million miles of transition transmission lines just to actually do what they want to do. Uh, but let's talk about energy realities real quick because what happened to energy transition, guys? I'm kind of confused on that. <laughs> we well, I'll tell you what. Uh, Armando uh, is the uh, – he re- oh. Ar- Armando named, renamed it, and we also have Irina Slav back. And we have t- the great Tammy Nemeth. Huh. And then we're even going to open it up for guests. And Monday, our guest is the wonderful, the national treasure, uh, Meredith Angwin. She oh, wrote wow. Shorting the Grid. Yeah. And she is, I, I would hug her in about two and a half seconds. Yeah. So we're going to do a group therapy hug on Monday. <laughs> okay. So y'all changed, y'all renamed it the Energy Real- Realities? Yes. And Energy it's realities. episode number 94 or 95 coming out. Well, that's exciting. Okay, I I did not know that. So the already yes, and, and in fact, oh, as of this month, that podcast has been going for two years. Wow, man, yeah. David, I tell you what, you know, I, I always love how Stu, um, you know, introduces us every every episode. It's always fun, but the fact that you are part of Forbes, you're a contributing author at Forbes, the Daily Caller, uh, your Substack continues to go off, and I mean, people. 
people stop and listen to you. And, and I think that's really neat. And uh, while well, I'm just very excited to have you at NAEP this year for three days, um, I think NAEP is missing out by not having you at least speak or be a oh. moderator for one of those things. Um, <laughs> and, um, but, you know, but, I, but I'm excited they, that they we're going to They said no to bad stuff. dressers. Yeah. No bad said, dressers. Yeah. They got to, you got to have a better dresser. <laughs> yeah. But you made it down last year with all the crazy weather that we had last year. Yes, absolutely. And I was on that uh, panel discussion with Doug Sheridan and it was great. And, uh, you know, I, I don't, it seemed pretty successful to me. I was hoping we might repeat it this year, but, uh, but, you know, it's all good. We're going to be doing our podcast and that'll be great that uh, hopefully we catch, uh, you know, several, I mean, several episodes of each of our podcasts during those days and, uh, yeah. and uh, well, have a productive time there. Yeah, we're already lining up uh, executives, CEOs, uh, and we're going to be doing live deal evaluations uh, in the booth, David. And we've got, I think, about 10 podcasts already lined up for folks. So it's going to be active. You know, are you are you excited about listening to anybody? Have you? I don't even know. You know, I'll put you on the spot, David. Have well, you, like, you had know, a chance to look at Nape yet, or uh, I've you know, spent excited so about much. anybody talking or? I know you've been on assignment for like the last two weeks, so it yeah. may, may be too early to ask you that question. He's still got salt water in his ears. Uh -huh. No, I spent so much time on my private yacht, you know, I haven't had a chance to review the agenda. Um, I'm kidding, of course, uh, but I, I've been negligent. I haven't gone through the agenda yet, but uh, but I will. And uh, it's I, I always got, you know, a high quality event. NAEP is one of the best events of the whole year, every year. Oh, it is. Well, I got chastised yesterday that I'm not doing enough promoting all of our stuff yet. So I, I got to guess do a better job who, of getting who chastised uh, you. People were just like, man, you need to be getting this info out there more. So like we've got a month away and um, and, and flights are booking up like flights are uh, right. flights are, are drying up. Uh, rooms are drying up. So um, so I guess, you know, for, God willing, if they asks us to be back with another pavilion next year. We'll need to start, I guess, six months in advance or something. I don't know, but <laughs> but I'm pretty sure Leanne and Drew that you know, the moment it's over, they start back up again for the following year. So, uh, like you said, you know, it is an event to behold, and uh, it's definitely something that yeah. every operator, every EMP company at least circles on their. And, and on that Wednesday, we're we're trying to get the uh, governors of Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, we're still waiting on the negotiations on that. Um, I may have to sacrifice myself and not do a podcast because I'll have to hold the camera for you two. Um, so that might be a fun thing. Could be fun. <laughs> well, but, you know, as, as we talk, we'll go ahead. Yeah, I apologize. There's a delay here. Between Are you Carl okay? Yeah. Have I frozen up or something? Did I freeze up? No, no, you're good. You're good over that, here. That's a, yeah, that's a good pun. Yeah, yeah, that that's a good <laughs> pun, and that's a good way to, to get into where we're at. You, you know, uh, here ERCOT did their little deal saying, hey, can y'all conserve? But, hey, we've done pretty good, right? Uh, you know, ERCOT has handled the grid. Yeah. Uh, natural gas is, once again, the great savior. We need more of it. Uh, but what are your thoughts on, on how we've handled this uh, early winter storm? I'm sure we got one more in late uh, February, March, but – Right. What do you think right now? Are you hopeful, David? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, the grid did just fine. Um, and it's, you know, because they have made all these improvements in the system since 2001. Uh, they've registered all those critical natural gas compressor stations and pipelines and production sites. And they winterized some of the power plants, but not enough of them. Uh, and so you didn't have mm -hmm. natural gas going offline like we did in February, and and that was critical Tuesday, because you did lose wind on Tuesday for the most part, yeah. and natural gas was popping in sixty five percent of all generation on the grid, you know, uh, right. and so and when you have that available, then then you're going to get through these really bad cold fronts like the one we just had. Um, we need more dispatchable reserve capacity. This we we have to realize. This storm was was a fraction of what Winter Storm Uri brought into Texas. And mm -hmm. this was not that severe a weather event. We still are going to have to have quite a bit more 
thermal dispatchable capacity in reserve for those kinds of events. And I, and I, I understand that those events only happen in Texas about once a decade, but we lost 300 of our fellow Texans in winter storm Uri. And uh, we should never, Texas should never have an issue with electricity yeah, availability right. like happened then. So uh, we got to get that done. But but yeah, the, the grid performed well this week. Oh, you bet. I, I'll tell you, the charts that went around from ERCOT were amazing. When you take a look at uh, 0% power, from wind and solar at certain points uh, and the megawatt, the available nameplate megawatt on the wind uh, with nine um, megawatt on wind and it was producing one, whatever the, the chart was. I'll have it in the show notes. Yeah, the winter so availability. It was pretty amazing. The winter availability on wind is, is almost 39 gigawatts in Texas and wind right. was struggling to produce 10. And in fact, on Tuesday yep. morning, wind was putting out four or five. And, you you know, you just can't rely on wind. And, and ERCOT and our state officials have lived in this fantasy land where they can just keep building windmills and everything's going to be fine. And now they're in a fantasy land where if they just keep building solar panels, everything's going to be fine. Everything's not going to be fine. Right. And and so, someday they're going to have to wake up to that or we're going to have more dead people in this state after week-long blackouts again. You know, RT is a EMP operator out there. Do you think, uh, what can we do to get the regulatory issues solved to help you out? Because we're going to need more natural gas. We're going to need more oil. Is there any, what, call your legislator. Hey, I got an idea. Um, let's get a hold of all the politicians and on a bad stormy day, Let's have them do a speech out in the middle of West Texas, and all that hot air wind would get them turbines rolling. What do you think, David? <laughs> oh, that, yeah. I like that idea. Uh, I, I think we, if we put Washington out, they could power, and some of them could even face the other way. Yeah. But I, I, I no, think I, the problem with I, that I would be right John Kerry would object to the carbon footprint from them, you know, blowing all that hot CO2 out there yeah. now. So. Did you? how much that is the perfect energy source for the next hundred years not even oil as much as i, I love making a dollar off of oil uh, but right now we just need legislation that's pro pro natural gas and um uh, and when i say we need to lower the regulations david um I, I don't think we really need to um you know i'm not trying to say we need to like burn mother earth we just need to have a a, a friendly administration that that's willing to help produce a clean amount of energy here in America. What do you think, David? All right. Uh, I'll tell you what, for this episode of the crude truth, I'll tell you what, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and call this one. Well, this so, crude truth episode. Let's go. <laughs> We're going to cut this one short. The crew truth. David, we sure appreciate you. We got so many more things to do. We're going to have some great fun out here. David, we're going to have your sub stack uh, in the show notes. We're going to have your crude truth. And I'm Stu Turley, president CEO of the Sandstone Group. You got to come out to the bar with us, folks. We'll see you soon. <laughs>